Hi, in this tutorial, we are building a full stack TypeScript application. We will cover not only the front end, but also the back end. I will show you how to design the database, how to deploy it, and much more. So, last time we configured uh, Vue.js version 3, which comes with this new composition API. Today, we will adapt this code to use TypeScript. Our goal is to build yet another task management application. I've seen some comments from the last episode and some people were pointing out that we are using Vue.js version 3, but we are not using TypeScript. In today's episode, we will cover that part. We will introduce TypeScript to our Vue.js snippet. So this is our application so far. We have a list of tasks which are predefined in our code and then we can add new tasks and once we refresh it returns to this initial state defined by the by those tasks that are hard coded so now let's introduce typescript to this code what you need to do is to go to your script and you need to define that the snippet in this uh, script is typescript by saying lang ts in order to make this work we need to stop our server and we need to update uh, Kretis. In the last episode we were using Kretis 63 and this feature will only work in Kretis 64. Let's see how we can quickly update the application from within the VS Code. So I press Ctrl T, I select update. It shows me all the packages that can be updated. In our case, we are interested in updating Kretis from 63 to 64, which is correct. We can close this window and now we can do Kretis install, which runs npm install behind the scene. And once it's done, we can close this window. We can run Kretis start. It will take a few moments and we can verify that the version is 64. We can minimize this window, we can refresh the application, it should work as before. And now let's adapt this code uh, a little bit so that it's more TypeScript than JavaScript. So the first thing I will do is to define the shape for tasks. So I will use an interface, I will call it task. And this interface will have a name which is mandatory and this will be a string and a boolean field which says if this task is completed or not. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that we will design the shape for the whole state in this component. So for the simplicity reason, I will call this state. As you can see, our state consists of a new task field and uh, an array of tasks. So let's design this this way. So we will have new task, which is a string. And then we will have tasks, which is an array of tasks. And here we are using the previous interface. So now in our state method, let's extract tasks above the state initialization. And let's say this is a, an array of tasks. And let's copy that part like so. So as you can see, we have a first error. And the problem is that we only define the field name, but we don't define the, the DOM. So let's fix that. So by default, the DOM should be false. And once we add this, as you can see, the error disappears because our data conforms to the shape we defined using the interface. So now we can go back to our state and we can say, that tasks is tasks, which is this variable over here, or we can just say a task. We can do the same for the new task. So we can say that a new task is a string, which will be empty at the beginning and it will be initialized over here. And now we can instruct reactive that the shape that we are providing is of the type state the type we defined over here. So if we hover over state, we see that it now knows that it consists of new task, which is a string and task, which is an array of tasks. 
So now we see that we have an error, a type error, because we are adding in the add task function, we are adding a new task, but we are only defining the name. And done is also uh, mandatory in a way we defined, because we defined it this way. We could define it as optional, but we decided to de define it on a mandatory for now. Thanks to the types, we now can quickly see the problems in our code. So let's be explicit. And when we are adding a new task, which means that by default, it will be not done. As you can see, the application is still working. We can uh, add new tasks. But now we are using a bit of TypeScript to uh, control the shape of our data. Let's now do small changes in this code. So the first thing would be to make those checkboxes clickable. We can just go to the input checkbox, which we have over here, and we can use the model, the model. And since we defined this new field done, we can now use it. So we can say task done. And just for fun, let's make uh, the remember milk true. So we can now check those. And if we refresh, it goes back to this initial state, which we defined here. The first three tasks are false, not done, and the last one is done. So now we could improve even further this application by adding the ability to enter a task by pressing the enter instead of pressing the button. So for example, we can write something and now if I press enter, nothing happens. So let's quickly change that. So here in the button, we already have this click event attached to the add task function. So let's define another event which responds, which is triggered once we press the enter. And this is key up. Uh, dot enter and this should be the same function so now if I write something and I press enter nothing happens because of course we need to define the event not on the button but on the input field so we need to define it here let's try again and now if I write something else and I press enter it's added. The last thing we could do here is to have a checkbox where we can check all the tasks at once. In order to do that, let's just go and copy one of the checkboxes and let's paste it on top of the list. Let's remove the V model and the, the name, which will be check all. And let's reduce the margin between the two. So let's say margin two. And let's maybe make this check all a little bit smaller. So we will use text small, something like that. And finally, it would be nice to have this behavior when you click check all every tasks are being marked as done. So in order to do that, we need to define a new function. So let's go back to our code. And here, after the add task, let's do check all tasks. And this will be a very simple function which takes each task from, from our state and then it marks it as true. Let's export it. and let's attach it to the click. So here in the input, once we click the checkbox, it means that it will be changed. So we will attach it to the change event and we will use check all tasks function. So now let's see if it works and it works. But now the problem is that we need to, if we uncheck it, it remains checked. This is not what we intended. So let's slightly adjust our function. So instead of attaching true, we will be using the uh, target event. So we will be grabbing event target checked. And now if I click and unclick, I should have uh, the behavior I, I wanted to have. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We added a bit of TypeScript. We add a little bit of polish to this application. And uh, in the future episode, we will polish it even further and we will start adding some ways to manage the state in a more organized ways. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next time.